Hi guys, uh, in the earlier video we had talked about uh, different ways to graph uh, linear inequalities in two variables. Today we're going to spice it up and talk about how to graph systems of, in of inequalities. Well, let's just say systems of linear inequalities. So the directions read, uh, graph the solution region of the system of inequalities. Uh, depending on the textbook that we use, uh, it may give the directions like that, or it may just say graph the intersection of the system of inequalities, or it may say, it may say graph the uh, compound inequalities. And in this case, they will be separated by the word and. But um, I'm going to slightly change the problem. So I'm going to pretend that we did not have a system of inequalities. I'm going to pretend that we had a system of equations. So we have x plus 2y equals uh, 0. And then we have 3x minus 4y is equal to 12. And I'm going to pretend the direction said uh, solve by graphing. Okay. So to solve by graphing, we graph the lines and see where the lines intersect if they intersect at all. So according to my cool calculator, the graphs uh, intersect at 2.4, negative 1.2. So that means that the solution set of the system of equations will be 2.4, uh, negative 1.2. But that is not our problem. So now let's it's time to face my fears, not your fears, because you're cool like that. Uh, we want to graph the solution region of the system of inequality. So in short, we want to graph the intersection. So uh, let's go ahead and graph these inequalities one at a time. So we graph the first inequality. Uh, let me go ahead and erase this because they're in my way. So the top inequality reads x plus 2y is less than or equal to 0. And then um, I guess we have we the part the boundary line is part of the solution and the rest of the solutions are down below. Uh, let's go ahead graph the second inequality and that gives us 3x minus 4y is less than 12. So inequality doesn't have the equal to part so the points on the boundary line are not part of the solution. But when we continue doing the math, we realize that the actual solutions are below the boundary line. But now, moment of truth, what is the intersection? So thanks to technology, we can graph these in the same screen, okay? So the solution set of the top inequality is given by the blue area. The solution set of the bottom inequality is given by the green area. The question is, what is the intersection? What is the solution? The solution set is given by the intersection, the space where the overlap. This is the region where... Uh, uh, these are this is the region where all the points are solutions of both inequalities so in the book you're not gonna see the answer like this because the book has an answer key not like a solution manual so they only give you answers so if I did this right uh, let me see how do I graph the intersection All right, let me go ahead, turn this off. So uh, uh, we can pinpoint where the intersection is. It's the space where they overlap. So if I did this right, uh, the purple area is the space where they overlap, okay? So this is how you will see the answer in the back of the book. <coughs> We, we uh, graph or shape the overlapping area. This part of the solution, um, I guess because we have the equal to part uh, from whichever this one was. I think it was the top one. Yeah, cool. And then uh, what happened to the fake line or dash line? Well, it's, it's not part of the intersection. So they didn't have a need. Desmos didn't have a need to, to include it because it's a fake line after all. Okay, so this is how we're going to submit it. Um, are we going to do this by hand? Of course we are. That's why we're talking about these problems. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at uh, make something spicier. So in the first problem, we have a system of inequalities. Uh, <laughs> We have a system of inequalities, but just two inequalities. And in this, uh, in the final problem, we have a system of inequalities where we have three inequalities. But the question is, how are we going to graph it? Uh, we're going to graph it the same exact way. We'll graph it one at a time. So we have 2x minus y is less than or equal to 3. So the line is part of the solution set, and the rest of the solutions are above the boundary line. You know, we'll do the math to see why. We take our time. Let's go ahead graph the other inequality. So we have y is less than 4.5. So again, there's no equal to part in the boundary line. So the boundary line is out. So we make it dash. The actual solutions are below the boundary line. Cool. All right. For the third and final inequality, we have 0 is uh, less than or equal to x. And that is less than or equal to 3. Okay. Fantastic. So, uh, in this case, uh, we have a two-part inequality uh, condensed into one, okay? So we, this is saying, um, I wish I could put my finger on it, but I can't. 
we want to graph the region where the x is greater than or equal to zero and then this uh, the region where x is less than or equal to three so let me go ahead see if i can do this so this means um x is uh greater than or equal to zero pretend that says greater than or equal to zero and at the same time x is uh less than or equal to three okay so uh uh, if we were to graph the equation x equals 0, we will have a vertical line that crosses through 0 on the x-axis. If we were to graph the equation x equals 3, then we would have a vertical line that crosses uh, the x-axis at 3. We want to graph the region where x is greater than 0, so that's going to be like to the right all the way to the right over here and we want to graph the region where x is less than three so the region less than three is to the left but the intersection or the area where all the x values are bigger than zero and at the same time under three is that sandwich area in between fantastic wouldn't you wish you had desmos and on the test yeah me too this is why uh that's okay, I'll hold my thoughts. Okay, so let me go ahead and turn them off. So for the grand finale, uh, well, what is the intersection? So we're going to graph each inequality. We graph it by hand, however we want. We graph the second one. We graph the third one. And then the answer is going to be wherever we have that intersection of all three, which is uh, this, this piece right here. So let me see if I can display that for you. 2x minus y. Uh, I didn't test this one before this video, so it's probably not going to work, but I try my best. Okay, and then, uh, okay. Yeah, you would think I would do this, but it's the middle of the night. We have no time to do test runs. Okay, I think I did this right. Okay, let me turn it off. So again, we, we graph the first inequality, we graph the second inequality, we graph the third inequality, and the, the solution region or the intersection is the, is the region where all three uh, shadings uh, overlap, which is this uh, trapezoid looking thing, okay? So uh, let me go ahead and highlight it, and then let me turn the other ones. And that's exactly how you will see the answer uh, in the back of the book. Uh, because the back of the book just gives answer keys, doesn't give solutions. Cool. Fantastic. So now, uh, what are we going to do? Uh, we're going to actually do this by hand. Give me a sec. Okay, guys, so uh, we have just finished uh, graphing uh, these two problems uh, with decimals, but now it's time for us to do it by hand. Okay, so the directions read that we are asked to graph the solution region of the system of inequalities. Um, if we change the books, they, the notes say graph the intersection of the system of inequalities. So uh, let's go ahead, graph it by hand. Uh, since we have more than one inequality, I'm going to go ahead, label them. For me, it's, uh, it's impossible to go straight answer. So this is how it's going to go down. We, we are going to graph the boundary lines for all the inequalities in the system. And then we will just uh, graph the solution set. So for the first inequality, we have x plus 2y is less than or equal to 0. Uh, we graph the boundary line however we like. The recommendation is just to use um, the, slope, uh, the slope and y-intercept. But you can use any other technique. So if we solve for y, let's go ahead, subtract x from both sides, and that will leave us with 2y is less than or equal to negative x. To get rid of the times 2, let's go ahead, divide both sides by 2, and then that will give us y is less than or equal to negative 1 half times x. If you want to put the special effect 1, go for it, and then you can highlight the coefficient of x. Let's write down the game plan. So identify what we need from the boundary line, and then make the call if we're going to uh, shade above or below. Okay, so in this case, the slope is negative 1 half. Let's go ahead and put the... Um, the negative with the numerator. There is no constant term, so our y-intercept is at zero. Now the question is, can we do the graph of the boundary line? And the answer is yes, because the inequality symbol has what I call the equal to part. So let's go ahead, put solid or solid line. And then once we do our boundary line, where are we going to shade? Are we going to shade above the boundary line or are we going to shade below the boundary line? So that we're going to look at the inequality symbol only because the inequality is written in slope intercept form. In the beginning, it was not written in slope intercept form, so we couldn't make that call. But now that it's in slope intercept form, let's do this. 
So because we have one of the is less than, so we're going to shade below the boundary line. And you would think I will graph this now, but because we have more than one inequality, I'm just going to write down the, the game plan, okay, for both. So second inequality, we have 3x minus 4y is greater than 12. Work your magic to uh, write it in slope intercept form and then identify everything that you need to uh, graph the solution set. We will isolate the y term by subtracting 3x from both sides and that will leave us with 4y is greater than negative 3x plus 12. Work your magic. To get rid of the times negative 4, let's go ahead divide both sides by negative 4. And then don't forget, at any point, if you uh, multiply or divide both sides by a negative, you have to flip or reverse the direction of the inequality symbol. So our new statement should read, y is less than a uh, positive 3 fourths times x uh, less 3. Let's write down the game plan. The slope is 3 fourths. The y-intercept is at negative 3. Um, can we do the graph of the boundary line? And the answer is no, because the inequality symbol does not contain the equal to part. So uh, let me go ahead and uh, write that out. So we're going to put dashed line, because writing fake line sounds weird. That's just how I speak. Once we do our dashed line, where are we going to shade? Are we going to shade above the boundary line, or are we going to shade below the boundary line? And again, because we have one of the is less than, then we're going to shade below the boundary line. So let's go ahead and uh, pick up our straight edge. So let's do this. So for the first inequality, uh, the y-intercept is at 0. Let's locate 0 on the y-axis. We apply the slope, so we're going to go down 1, 2 to the right down one two to the right we have said that the line is in so let's go ahead do a solid line bear with me uh, so, yeah this looks pretty easy but um no it's a lot tougher okay because we're gonna do more than one line on this graph area i'm gonna go ahead label it not for credit but it's just for myself for like easy access okay so uh this will be the boundary line of the first inequality so i put l1 for line one let's go ahead do the graph the graph just the boundary line of the second inequality so our y-intercept is at negative three let's locate negative three on the y-axis and then we apply the slope so it's three four so we're gonna go up three four to the right up three four to the right i think i counted correctly we have said that the line is out so we cannot graph it let's go ahead do our fake line and then I'll, I'll label it as line two oh fake line who has about to do a solid line and we cannot erase a, a pen Ooh. Now again, um, if we look at decimals, we can see where the uh, where the answer is, but we don't have decimals, so this is how it's gonna go down. Okay, so I I could use my hands, but my hands are kind of big, so um, I'm gonna go ahead take out my special effects. Um, they're not see through because I couldn't find them. Well, I didn't want to look for them. Okay. So the first inequality, we want to graph uh, the area uh, below it. So this is uh, the line one, and the area below it is right here. I should have, I brought the same color. Hold on, let me get a, a business card. Okay. For the second inequality, where am I? Uh, we want to also graph the area below it. I didn't put line two because I forgot. The area below it will be right here. Okay, where do they overlap? I mean, who can see that? Not I, okay? So maybe that wasn't, that didn't plan out too good. I should have done a test run. Okay, so uh, the area below the first inequality is right here. Cool. And the area uh, below the second inequality is over here. And that still doesn't work. Okay, let's try it again. I want to cover the, the area that's not the solution. The area below the first inequality is right here. So let me just cover what's not. So this is so far it. The solution of the second inequality is also below that line. So this is a line two. So it's this part right here. So let me cover it. So the intersection or the area that they have in common is what I left open. Okay. And if you if you rewind this video on Desmos, you will see that that's the solution set. Fantastic. Okay. I tried. Yeah.
I should say like a joke or something while I shade, but I don't have time for jokes. They don't pay me for that. Okay, problem B. So it's a little bit spicier. So again, the, the solution is uh, the area where they overlap. So that is it. Problem B for the, the grand finale of this video. So we have three inequalities in the system and the directions say uh, graph the solution region. Um, in English, graph the intersection. So we graph all three inequalities and see where they overlap, if they overlap at all. What is up? What if it's a trick question? Okay, so the first inequality, we have 2x minus y is less than or equal to 3. And um, let's go ahead, put this in slope intercept form. We will subtract 2x from both sides, and that will leave us with negative y is less than or equal to negative 2x plus 3. Work your magic, isolate the y. So to get rid of the times negative one, let's go ahead, divide both sides by negative one. And don't forget, whenever you multiply or, di or divide by a negative, you have to reverse the direction of the inequality symbol, or we say flip. So our statement should read, y is greater than or equal to 2x minus 3 and we're going to execute or write that game plan so we identify what we need from the graph for the boundary line and then we tell the reader if we're going to shade above or below the boundary line so in this case the slope is 2 uh, the y-intercept is at negative 3 are the points on the boundary line part of the solution and the answer is uh, yes because we have the equal to part so we're going to write solid line once we do the solid line, uh, on which side of the boundary line, on which side of the boundary line are we gonna shade? Are we gonna shade above the line or below the line? And in this case, because we have one of the is greater than, then we're gonna shade above the line. Fantastic. So, I mean, if you wanna do the boundary line right now, let's do it. Okay. Another problem. I did it at the end, but it's okay. Let's do it now. So the y-intercept is at negative 3. Let's go ahead and locate negative 3 on the y-axis. We apply the slope. If you choose to write it as a fraction, then we're going to go up to 1 to the right. Up to 1 to the right. We have said that the lines and the boundary line are part of the solution. So we do a solid line. Uh, just to just to make it clear, uh, when I say that the line is part of the solution, I mean the solution of this individual inequality, not necessarily uh, of the intersection. Like uh, going back to uh, problem A, uh, well, we did a solid line. Well, that's because uh, uh, the all the points on the boundary line are part of the solution set for the inequality itself. But the intersection though, um, it's only where they overlap. So in the book, you would just see this piece. You wouldn't see the line extended because this part of the line is, is not part of the intersection. But we're not gonna erase it because, no, who would erase that? Leave your lines there. I'm more concerned with the shading. You know, that you shade only the overlapping, the intersection area? Okay, I digress. Okay, so uh, back to our problem. Okay, so we're only going to do the boundary line. So the y-intercept is at negative 3. We apply the slope 2 over 1. Uh, we set solid line, and then we're going to take a pause on the shading. Let me go ahead label it line 1 because we're going to have lots of lines. Okay, uh, second problem. We have y is less than 4.5. Okay, cool. So in this case, we don't have both x and y variables, so we're not going to be slanted. Uh, it's already solved for y, so if you want to do your horizontal line, go for it. And if you're like, no, I need a table of values, then go ahead do a table of values. For the purpose of time, we're going to just go ahead do the horizontal line. So in this case, let me speak to myself. If we only have a y variable, then we're going to have a horizontal line. Okay. So we're going to have a horizontal line that intersects the y-axis at 4.5. Let's go ahead and locate 4.5 on the y-axis. And then you can look in earlier videos so you can see the table of value solution. Okay, now the question is, are the points on the boundary line part of... Uh, are the points on the boundary line part of the solution for this inequality? And the answer is no, because we don't have the equal to part. So let me go ahead and put a dashed line. So again, we have to do our fake line because we have to know where where, where are the shading stops. Okay, bear with me. So dash line. Cool. 
All right, cool. So that's two inequalities down, one more to go. Okay, well, it's actually uh, two and undercover. So we have x is uh, zero is less than or equal to x, and x is less than or equal to three. Okay, so uh, we can split this or we can leave it as such. So uh, we have a, a compound inequality. So um, in this case, this is saying that x has to be bigger than zero, and at the same time, x has to be less than three, okay? So x is greater than or equal to zero, and at the same time, x is less than or equal to three. If you don't need to rewrite it, then don't, but I do, okay? So let's go ahead, graph these boundary lines. Oh, I forgot to put line two, okay? Uh, let's go ahead graph these boundary lines so we have x is greater than or equal to zero so gentle reminder x only if our equation or in this case inequality ha only has an x then we're going to have a vertical line again you can do a table of values like we did back in the day so the first inequality we should have a vertical line that goes through zero on the x-axis this is the x-axis that is zero so let me make sure that we have a vertical line that goes through zero. Okay, oh, uh, stashed or solid, I forget. So the inequality sim the inequality has the equal to part, so we're gonna go ahead and do a solid line. Okay. Perfect, all right, for the second uh, part, uh, we have x is less than or equal to 3, same speech, x only, uh, vertical line, and the vertical line should go through positive 3 on the x-axis. So let's locate 3 on the x-axis, and then we'll do our vertical line. I think we said solid, right? Yeah, okay, cool. So let me just label them. So this was the third line and this was the fourth line. So line three, line four. Fantastic. So for number two, uh, we made the call if we can graph the line or not, but I forgot to put the above or below. Uh, this is solve for y, so we can use that above or below technique. Uh, in this case, because we have one of the is less than, then we're going to shade below. Okay, uh, for number three, we cannot use the above or below technique because uh, like when we have x is equal to zero or this vertical line, there's no above or below, there's only left or right. This is why uh, the above or below technique only works uh, if you have a y and you have to put it in slope intercept form. So if you look at Desmos, then you can see what the answer is, but we're not gonna rewind, you could rewind on your own. Okay. First inequality, where am I? We want to shade the region above the boundary line. So line one is right here, and the region above it is over here, okay? So let me cover up what's not the answer, okay? So now this is what I'm looking at. For line two, we want to shade the region below the boundary line. So this dashed line is line two. Let me label it on the other side, okay? This dashed line is line two, and the region below it will be over here. Okay, so let me cover up what's not the solution. So, so far, that's our answer. Okay, I'm running out of hands, so you're going to have to help me probably. Um, and for number three, we want to shade the region where all the x's are greater than zero. You can do the test point, but if you keep it cool, sorry, uh, I have to lift my hands. You know what? Let's use these papers that I cut. Okay, so these are my hands in place. Okay. Cool. All right. So now we have our x is greater than zero. So you can do a test point, or if you keep it cool, we want to graph the region where all the x values are greater than zero. So like, if we look to the left, all the x values are going to be less than zero, and if we look to the right, all the x values are going to be bigger than zero. So in this case, we graph to the right. So we pretend we shade it, but let me go ahead and cover it up. So, so far, that's my solution set. This one, uh, you can't see what I wrote, so let me rewrite it. Then we have x is less than or equal to 3. So, uh, we want to shade the region where all the x values are less than 3. So, you can't see it, so let me go ahead and uncover it. So, if we look at the x-axis, all the values to the right are going to be larger, and all the values to the left are going to be smaller. So, let me go ahead and move this, okay? Um, so we want to shade the region where all the x values are smaller. So the vertical line is right here, and all the x values that are smaller are going to be to the left. OK, 
okay? So we want the region where the x's are bigger than 0 and at the same time are under 3, okay? If I move these, it's going to be this sandwich area, okay? So to recap, the first inequality, we want the region above it, okay? So it's this part right here. So I'm going to cover what's out. For the second inequality, we want the region below it. So it's this part right here. So I'm going to cover what's out, okay? The third part, I want the region where the x values are greater than 0 and at the same time under 3. So that's the sandwich right there in the middle, okay? So uh, the sandwich in the middle looks like that, okay? So those are my four hands coming into play. And if you remember from the video, I had said the, the intersection is the region where all the shadings overlap, which was the trapezoid looking thing. All right, so let's go ahead shade it with confidence. Okay. So you use your pencil, or in this case, a highlighter, because um, the pencil doesn't work so well. So the moral of the story is, hopefully you, you didn't overshade, okay? The moral of the story is this. What is the intersection of the system inequalities? Where is the region that's above the first inequality, below the second inequality, and between on these two inequalities? What's going to be this area right here? So that's a beautiful problem. I wouldn't be surprised if you see it on your midterm. Thanks, guys.